Let's look at the next most important muscle when avoiding complications in the eye. This is the lateral rectus. Now the lateral rectus muscle pulls your eye laterally away from the midline, which means every time you look left or right, your left or right lateral rectus is pulling the eye in that direction. If you weaken that muscle, just imagine what would happen. If one muscle is weak, as you look left or right, the eye that is not affected will move and the eye that is affected will stay the same. So you will immediately get double vision. And this is a known side effect from botulinum toxin and it is caused by treating the crow's feet too close to the eye. So if you actually have a look on this diagram about where this muscle is, if you zoom up here, it is often protruding or very close to where the orbital rim ends. So if you were to place a needle directly into this area, you will probably affect the insertion point of the lateral rectus muscle. So that also means it's easier to avoid. An interesting side note on this is that the original discovery of using botulinum toxin in aesthetic medicine was made by an ophthalmologist and dermatologist partnership. This husband and wife clinic were using botulinum toxin in their ophthalmology clinic and they discovered by accident that many of their patients were coming back to the skin clinic and wanting more botulinum toxin because they had noticed what a great improvement it made to wrinkles. So from its inception, botulinum toxin has spread and affected nearby muscles. And so it can work the other way too. You can be treating orbicularis oculi and affect the lateral rectus muscle. But good technique will reduce the risk hugely. I've never had the side effect with any of my patients and it's largely down to leaving safety margins and injection strategies that reduce the risk of spread. Here are the injection strategies you can use to reduce the risk of lateral rectus palsy. Number one is depth. We're usually treating orbicularis oculi muscle. It's the most superficial muscle and is underneath a very thin layer of skin. The best injectors will only slide one or two millimeters into the skin, just beyond the point where the skin blanches. So when you inject, you just get a little bleb and your botulinum toxin is sitting on top of the surface of the orbicularis oculi muscle. This then acts as a defense against that toxin going deeper into the underlying structures. You also underneath the muscle have a layer of fat and then you have the bone, and you potentially have the orbital membrane depending on where you're injecting. These layers protect the important structures. When you go too deep, you slice through all those layers. You also get an increase in bruising, but you massively increase your risk. The other area is how close are you to the actual orbital rim? So using the bone is ultimately the best defense you can have against getting product too deep. So if there's a bone in the way, great. The closer you get to the orbital rim, the more likely you're gonna be able to pass toxin beyond that point. So leave a 1.5 centimeter margin from the orbital rim, which is often closer than you think, so that you're always away from the eye. Point with your needles pointing away from the eye if you can. I think it's okay for experienced injectors because they have very good needle tip control. The reason you point away though is because new injectors often don't just slide to the point they want to inject. They go too far in and then they come back out and then inject, and that leaves a tract which allows toxin to spread. So generally point away from the eye until you are very confident.